Hey, this is Chris Wilder. Welcome to another episode of Marshall Secrets. And it's still, can you believe it? It's still the Animal McYoung Barbecue. I've got a really interesting guest right now. Wim Demaru. Did I say that right? Pretty close. Demaru. Oh, de de, see, there you go. Right, <laughs> say, say it out loud for everybody. I say this, Wim Demaru. God, all right. All right, so what I want you to do is is I want you to say hello, and I'm happy to be here in your native language. Okay, I'll say, uh, hello, ik ben uh, blij hier te zijn. That's just wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, hey, have you been to a barbecue before? Yeah, a couple, actually. I've yeah. been to a couple, uh, All right. like three or four, but it's been a while now. It's been like, I think, three or four years ago, last time I came over. We were talking before we got started here, and it was about the amount of time that you spend on the road um hitting your clients what are you what are you doing you fit you, you're doing uh public uh physical training are you I'm, doing martial I'm, arts what are you doing i'm a personal trainer so that's my main job so i mainly go over to clients and it's kind of like half and half teaching martial arts and the other side is uh regular fitness uh weight training uh conditioning stretching stuff like that how to restuff a bag without unstuffing there it. you go there yeah. you go. I'll tell you what, that was a huge hit. You'd be surprised how many people I've talked yeah? to. Oh, yeah, they love that. It's like, hey, you know, and it's like, I'm going to try it. I did it. It worked. Well, I'll, I'll tell you how that one came about. I'm lazy. I just, <laughs> I was so fed up of always having to refill my heavy bag yeah. and, and just have to take everything out and stuff it back in again. And, and I was like, you know, i got to find something else. i got to find another way. I just start kicking it on the floor to re redistribute it and, and just throw it around, put it upside down and takes a couple of minutes work to do it that way. And, you know, it, it does get, um, you, you have to start over a little bit more often, but it takes less time than if you have to clean it out completely. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. lasts longer, but which is a lot of more work. So. And who even wants to know what's inside their bag? I don't, I don't, I think dead bodies or something. You know, some I, stuff so like I, that. Well, you know, the, when the kids, the other night, the kids were kicking uh, the, um, the bag and they were like, what's in here? It's hard. And I said, uh, it's, uh, it's a, um, human head <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't believe it so so tell me this how does a guy move from a martial arts instructor into doing the uh, personal training it, it kind of evolved naturally um I started about 17 years ago as a self-employed personal trainer, uh, but before that, I was teaching private classes already to people. You know, one martial arts training, and I got... no, no, hang on for a second. What do you teach? Um, nowadays, it's mainly Tai Chi Chuan, mm -hmm. um, uh, Muay Thai, kickboxing, Sancho, which is Chinese version of kickboxing. Uh, but that's the main thing. Self-defense, obviously, also. So that's that's what I teach most as far as martial arts go. Uh, but on the other hand, it, it kind of evolved from there, just getting more and more questions. And then people um, who I was already teaching martial arts also wanted to learn uh, some conditioning drills. Um, and I, I competed internationally, so I did a lot of a lot of conditioning back in the day, mm -hmm. and had a lot of experience that way. And, and started learning more and forming courses. And before I knew it, I was doing you know what a personal trainer does full time. So that's what I became. Then just happened naturally. We were actually kind of corresponding a little bit over um, something that is going on. And I don't know that I've really resolved it inside my head, but we've got products out there. We've got yeah. books and how-tos and DVDs and stuff. And that's that's part of, you know, what we do for a living. Um, you know, we, we, yeah. we take the time to do the analysis and to, you know, share, you know, our art with people. And, you know, whether it might be hardbound or, you know, DVD or whatever – but um, I found out the other day that everything I got out there, somebody scanned it all. Yeah, true. it's all it's all there. Now, granted, you're going to get a virus, you're going to get malware, you're going to get a robot. Yeah. You know, you're going to get bad stuff. I mean, you know, you have probably better luck if you were to go down and buy a prostitute. <laughs> you know, in, in the in the outskirts of of, um, of Tijuana, Mexico. <laughs> I, I, are, I think yeah. it would be. I think you would be safer than than downloading one of those things because there's there's um, there's just so much nasty stuff yeah. attached to those. But nonetheless, somebody felt that they could just do that. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt violated by it, man. I, uh, I, I I'm I'm a little bit on the fence on the whole issue. Not quite sure, you know, what to do. As as are many authors. Yeah. and publishing houses and, and, and companies that it's um, this whole trend of, of downloading 
um, started a while ago, obviously, but I meet a lot of young young people now in my class, and and for them it's absolutely normal to download anything and copy it. They think it's normal. Um, the problem is that when I talk to them, I say, look, I've got books out there, videos out there. Um, if everybody does that and nobody buys them anymore, why on earth would I write stuff? Why would I spend you know a week going to the United States? Um, stuff yeah, stuck you, in a video. Yeah, you just yeah. were shooting a, a I was a video. shooting over at Paladin Press. We yeah. were stuck in a studio for four days straight, working really, really hard. Let me let me take a little a little. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what. We'll come back to it. We'll sure. talk about that. Sure. I mean, and what I my point is, why would I do that? And why would any company, you know, uh, invest in me as an author? You know, m m producing videos, um, when nobody when nobody wants to pay for it, but they do want to have it. They want to have the product, but they just don't want to pay for it. I think that's called stealing. Uh, yeah, and I have a little bit of a of a of an attitude about it. It's like, well, what if uh, what if somebody goes to the library and goes and gets my book, yeah. and and reads it, and then you know uses that info? Is that stealing? It's it's a uh, you know there, there's fair use policy. There's that also. Yeah. So and libraries are supposed to be something special. And, and back home in Belgium, they're working on on this uh, legislation that would um, you'd be compensated uh, by um by libraries if your book is if they if they have it you'd get a really really small not really a royalty but a fee yeah because you know actually they are undercutting your selling margin yeah because they give it out for free uh, i mean big book people can lend it but for me the thing is that publishing is going really fast as far as evolution uh is concerned it's, it's changing very rapidly Things are happening, and I can understand it for people um, who see a video and, and it costs, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 bucks. I don't care. It doesn't, the, the number doesn't matter. And they think it's too much, and I say, you know, I don't have that cash on me, but I still want it. I'll quickly download it. I understand that for some people it's a lot of money, but that doesn't justify, you know, and if making this the norm, that this is now the standard, is downloading is fine. But, you know, when you see the sales figures that are dropping, as an author and your royalties go down, then you go like, why, why would I do this stuff? I'll well, do something else. Yeah, I'll do something else. Yeah. I don't you want know. to because I'm, I enjoy this. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very passionate about martial arts and self-defense and all the things that I put in my videos and books. But why would I keep doing that if, you know, it, it doesn't... I mean, as the, people forget that writing a book takes about a year sometimes. Yeah, it, it's... it's a, and work, hard work. I got one right now that's taken me almost two. Yeah. Um, and I'm still not happy with it. I started training back in the in the uh, mid '70s. The only place for me to get any real information was from my instructor. Yeah, you know there was no videotape, there was no DVD, there was no web. Yeah. That you know, and if you wanted to see something on television, you better be in front of it and see exactly. it because it's not coming on again until summer yeah. reruns, and then that's it. Yeah. yeah. And so it was a very different kind of context. I think. Let me put it this way. I am really willing to work with somebody financially if they've got a real passion for the art. Yeah. But just for some gas head in his mom's basement to download it just so that he can say, I've got it on a zip drive on my shelf, I, you know, that's, yeah. uh, I, got, I got kind of a problem with that. Because, well, you know, they believe that information has no value. That's what they're saying. Yeah. And I'm saying, I think it does because I got... I got the sore joints and I got the bruises <laughs> exactly. I, I, to prove that it, the information does have value. True. And and something else too, and I, I think you'll agree with this too, is is that you know the videos and the books really are introductions. Yeah, they're not. You can learn a lot from them, but you're never going to get really the essence of it until you've spent time with somebody who knows it. Exactly. And I think that's one of the things about the martial arts that people miss is it's not like downloading a music thing cuz you know what I can go I can go see Motorhead who I've seen seven times. I can go see Motorhead, <laughs> awesome. you know. Yeah, and, yeah, and enjoy the show and everything and I can listen to the music and the show and the music are two different experiences. Yeah. You know what? The video and training with somebody who produced that video yeah. are two different experiences. That's true. One of them is really profound, one of them is just good background. Yeah. And I'm not dismissing the background of it. No, it, it's like you said, it's an introduction. Um, 
just to give you an idea, um, I, I did my first video series with Paladin Press a couple of years ago, the Combat Sancho series, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a three sets of two discs. So it's six DVDs in total. And anybody can get that at Paladin. They can get it at Paladin Press. Um, so it's a lot of material. They told me that at the time when we showed, they never had a shoot where they shot that much material. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a really, I mean, lots of information. I'll show everything. I explain everything, et cetera, et cetera. And looking back at it now, uh, I've only scratched the surface yeah. of what I, what I want to put out there. We just uh, shot the second part about tactics and mindset. Uh, that's what we did uh, this week here at Pilot Impress. Um, but just like you said, it, it's just an introduction and people, they, they stare at that and they stare themselves blind. Uh, focusing on little details, but they don't see the big context. You can't give such a context like that in a book or in a DVD. Uh, it's just it's not possible. No. But like you say, you, you know, you do it in class and you ask your teacher, and sometimes it's really small things that you that suddenly make it click in your head. Like, ah, okay, that's what he means. That that's what what the whole the whole thing is with this aspect here or this technique or this form or whatever. And and that just takes a lot of training. It's like you said, you, you don't. I don't believe in secrets. I only believe no, in I knowledge. Don't, I don't really, I don't really believe in no. secrets either. I, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I have been training in Tai Chi Chuan for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we particular have, version. Uh, we we call. I mean, we um, the the former head head teacher of the style, uh, Chen Ting Hong, lived in Hong Kong, and he was a really interesting guy. He uh, they called him a Tai Chi bodyguard because he would stand up for Tai Chi people when they got their asses kicked by the <laughs> hard style guys <laughs> when they were working in uh, you know training in the parks etc and outside they yeah. they got beat up and he go outside and he beat up the hard style guys so they called him the Tai Chi bodyguard and because he was not one of the few guys who um, who actually could fight using his Tai Chi mm -hmm, techniques mm -hmm. the the press called him uh, called his style practical Tai Chi Chuan. And um, the current head teacher, there's Dan Doherty, my teacher's teacher, and also my teacher because I, I train whenever I can with him. Um, he he kept the name, so we call it practical Tai Chi Chuan. Yeah, uh, which is you know, I mean, the name doesn't matter, but I, I kind of no, like. No, I just it makes curious. sense to me. You know, yeah, it makes sense to me too. Yeah, um, um, you know, but a lot of people are like, oh, Yang Wu Chen, you know. If if anything. It's it resembles the Wu style, but I don't think the Wu family will be very happy if I say that. <laughs> so, so let's imagine I didn't say that. That's the kiss and cousin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what I wanted to say is we have something in the style called the six secret words. Yeah. And uh, I once had a, had a whole discussion with somebody about that, and because he wanted to know him, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to tell you. And you know why? Not because they're so. So the name is six secret words, but they're no no real big secrets. But they're practical fighting concepts. They're they're things that you can use to be better at the art that you practice. But I can tell them right now, but there are only the six words. But if you don't practice, you don't know what it means. And if you train hard and you, you train a lot and you practice and you go out there and, and, and you get into trouble and you have experience, some of these things will make perfect sense. And you'll see things in a different light that, you, that you've been training for maybe decades. And all of a sudden, when you see that word in that context, it just makes sense. Sure. And that's one of the things, it, it often happens in, uh, in Chinese arts that, that they have certain concepts that you have to remember, the, the characteristics of the style. What's one of the six secret words? Um, f for instance, um, one, one would be slapping. Okay. No, it doesn't mean anything. In, 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 you know, in and of itself, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, that, that way, when you see it within the context of the whole style, and that's a whole other discussion, it makes sense. Sure. And and that's the same thing with many other things. Um, I teach Sancho the, the Sanda, the, the Chinese kickboxing version as yeah. well. I've, yeah. I've you know, competed in that. Uh, one of the things that I tell my students before they start competing is you have to be able to generate forward pressure and you have to be able to absorb it, defend against it. And they all say, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they go out and compete. And, and then I ask them, do you remember what I said for your first class? Yes. Do you understand now? They say, oh, my God, yeah. Because I got my ass kicked because I couldn't generate it and I couldn't absorb it when the other guy came at me. Now, it all starts from there. And then as they get better and better, they can start, you know, instead of absorbing it, uh, absorbing also means getting getting out of the way. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean standing there and taking no. it on the chin. But you have no. to be able to do it. Because if you're in a in a, in a competition type uh, setting, in, in, and it doesn't matter how hard the sport is that you hit, how, uh, how hard that you hit, full contact or not, doesn't really matter. But... Um, 
if you compete in full contact, you have to be able to withstand the attacks from the opponent. Whether it's blocking, whether it's uh, parrying, whatever, you have to be able to handle it. And uh, everybody's going like, duh, of course you have to. Yeah, okay, until you're in front of a guy who's actually going to try to kick and punch you as hard as he possibly can, preferably knocking you out. And then it all changes. And then you have to be able to pull all that stuff off that you were so good at in the gym or in, in, in class when you're scared out of your mind because you can see in his eyes that he's not going to hold back. No. Like, like all your no, training partners. No, he's, yeah. he's going to knock you out. And yeah. it's going to hurt. And you just saw the guy before you were getting knocked out and his nose was plastered all over his face. And there was blood gushing out. And that was a fight before you got on. You are like, oh, okay, this is how it goes. And all of a sudden, you have to be able to pull it off. And, yeah. and that's one of the things that I mean is that sometimes it's just very simple things. Um, I've had it that I'd been training for over 10 years on, on one particular thing. And then all of a sudden I understood what my teacher said, that it, it all of a sudden makes sense. Like, okay, that's what he means. Like they, they talk about opening the quad, opening the hip fold and opening sure. and closing it. I didn't get it until I felt it. It didn't make sense at all. I'm like, okay, sure. Wow, what does that mean? And, and it's so vague. And then when you get it, uh, okay, then, then, then it started making sense. And then other pieces of the puzzle fall into place and you build on that. And then like 10 years later, you realize, no, that wasn't really what it meant. This is, this is even a better yeah, explanation. You know, and that keeps boy, on going, that process. I know. Isn't it great though? Yeah. Because I mean, that makes for a bottomless study. Yeah, exactly. Know, and, I, and I enjoy that. Well, let me, let me ask you this. And I don't want to turn this into, into a story about me, but you know, um, you're talking about opening and closing the qua and you've seen the San Chin video. Yeah. Um, Am, am I doing things that are similar to what you do? Um, what I or, really, is it, or is it different? It's very different, but there yeah. are some similarities. What I absolutely loved about what you said is stacking the bones. Yeah. Because that makes perfect sense to me. Now, when, when, I, when you say stacking the bones, do you mean stacking them so you can withstand vertical pressure of gravity? Yeah, well, I want to stack the bones so that I can generate through my skeleton yeah. out of the ground into my opponent. Exactly. But yeah. there's a vertical component to that. It goes into the ground... And then you, you use that to right. generate energy. Right. Uh, the way I see it is, how about stacking the bones in 360 degrees? Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is that I don't, go, I don't really go into the horizontal line yeah, of the exactly. San Chin. There you go. I, and I deliberately, I only touched on it. I didn't deliberately go into it because there's yeah. actually, I have, to, I have to do a horizontal through my, my, my upper chest, you know, girdle, my shoulders, but I also have to do one. Yeah, through, through, through my through my hips. Yeah, but you know, I didn't. Well, well, yeah. I'll put everything in the DVD. <laughs> no, <laughs> neither, neither do I. But it, it's like you said. I mean, again, and that's also something that I've noticed that um, I have a blog. I'm very active on my blog, and I've, and and you know, it's going well. A lot of people. And are by visiting. the way, too, uh, go ahead and give that. What's the address on that? It's very very difficult. Wimsblog.com. Wimsblog. Okay, I got to get that right. It's just my my first name, Wim sblog.com wimsblog.com yeah and and i'll tell you what if you're not um if you're out there in the martial arts world and you're not checking out this blog you should put it on there i have um i have a couple blogs that i check in on on a regular basis and yours is one of them because and i want to tell you why and i think this is really significant your blog it's not basic but it's fundamental by that i mean it doesn't say, oh, you know, you need to have respect in the martial arts because respect does this and respect does this, yada, yada, yada. We've all, yeah, okay, fine, fine, fine. You know, either you're going to have it or you're not going to have it. But what you talk about is not those basic things like that, but you talk about the fundamentals, which are things along the lines of, hey, I saw this video and it demonstrated a key aspect of mm, the training yeah, yeah. that I think is really important and let me show you what it looks like. By the way, I think it was absolutely the most gutsy thing put in that fight. How old were you, uh, that video you put up of that, you, that which, fight? Which fight was that? Um, boy, I don't know. It was, I mean, you had like to. Like a tournament or something? Yeah. You must have been uh, oh, um, 17, 18. No, no, no. I was in my 20s then. Oh, were you? Yeah. I, uh, 26, 27. Yeah, okay. so, so I, right. I can't remember. No, something like that. Because I got, I got old videos of me like when I yeah. was 20, 21. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at it and it's like, I'm not putting that up on the web. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, the thing is, um, I, I wrote about it on my blog also a while ago, and that um, for me, the, the whole thing, I know what I can do. I know yeah. what I can do when I look at my teachers sure. and other people. Sure. Um, I know what I did in competition, 
Yeah. And I know what other people did. Right. I know whose ass I kicked and who you know who kicked my ass. Because I wasn't the best guy out there in the com- in, in the competition circuit. Right. There were a lot of guys there who were better than I was. Yeah. I wasn't the best Sancho fighter at all. I was okay, you know, for for you know for that time and, and, and place. I was okay. I did okay. I was above average, I guess, because I I managed to you know go compete internationally. But there were a lot of guys who were better than I. Uh, and that's the way I feel about my judo. You know, when yeah. I was competing, I was I think I was I think I was slightly above average. Yeah, you know, but but there were guys I can remember one time at nationals, I grabbed a hold of this guy, and the second I grabbed him, it was what I call an oh shit moment. <laughs> yeah, I I knew I was in serious trouble, and it was yeah. We nobody had executed any motion at all. I just yeah, grabbed you know. him, and it was like this is not going to end well for me. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, and I threw my best technique on him because I figured I'm in, you know. Yeah. So I threw my best technique on him, and I might as well have gone out here to a lamp post and yeah. tried to move that. Yeah, it yeah. was just I'm real. so I so I know what you're talking about. You you have my heart on this one. <laughs> well, the, the the thing what I wanted to say is that. Um, I get a lot of emails and comments and, and so on on my blog. I mean, sure. a lot of people contact me through that and some really awesome things. I've met some great people uh, uh, through my blog and I had some amazing um, contacts. I had, had um, been invited to, you know, to guest teach seminars. And, you know, it's, sure. it's, been, it's been a fun ride for me. But I also had a, a lot of, you know, critical comments, which is fine. I don't, I don't mind at all, quite on the contrary, because that's the most interesting stuff. When people disagree but, with but, you, but are they are they good critical comments? Uh, oh, I get all all kinds. Okay, I, I've I've been called an what was it again? An evil Satanist communist, uh, stuff like that for because somebody disagreed with something. Well, I, I think wrote. that's fairly well known, isn't it? I thought yeah. so. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> so I, I wrote them back, and your point is, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I've been called names and stuff and stuff like that. It's just stuff. Yeah, I don't mind criticism. I don't care. You it's, know, it's fine. But if, but if, I do I do mind it when it turns into like. In fact, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I, I get I get the same kind of emails, and and, and I just don't read them. Uh, if they start if they start going south on me, I'm out. Oh no, no, no. The thing yeah. is, I store everything. Oh no, no. And I don't, my I don't do uh, that. my blog is such that it automatically gives it a, st- a timestamp, an IP address, everything. Oh, so sure, if sure. if ever there is a problem, you know, I I have documentation. Yeah, sure, sure. So it's just and it's automatic. I don't have to do anything. It just goes into a file, and that's it. Uh, and every now and then, look I, at you all tech savvy. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been I've been doing websites for over fifteen years. Now. Knock it out. Yeah, I started my 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 old one really long time ago, and and my Good blog degree. is actually a, the reincarnation of that one. Oh no, kidding! I started man. over. Uh, but when well, you were out there early. Yeah, yeah. I'm mean, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. <laughs> yeah, apparently, <laughs> my girlfriend says so. You know, you're the biggest nerd I know, and and you start punching a heavy bag, and everybody's scared. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> still love you, honey. <laughs> um, just one thing I wanted to point out, yeah, and that's please. why I brought up the blog. Um, I get a lot of comments about videos and books, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, one of the main things that I noticed is that people do not understand how you make a book or a video. The limitations, like you just said, you don't put everything in there. If I mean, the first book I wrote with Lauren Christensen, uh, who uh, if if you don't know Lauren W. Christensen, you know you've been living under a rock. That's well, one. Not and to mention that he's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a he's a really funny guy. Oh yeah. oh yeah, and he's got, I mean, some amazing insights, training, and experience all into one. He called me one day, you know, and I was like, "Hey, it's Lauren Christensen calling me," you know, and I'm thinking hey, we're going to have a discussion of martial arts. And he says, um, "How big of a stud do you think I need to have to hang a <laughs> HD TV?" You know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, what I wanted to say is, and we start, we wrote the Fighter's Body, a book yeah, about yeah. training and, and and nutrition. Right, uh, that was the first one we did together, and you know, that was my first book. So mm-hmm. Lauren had probably written about twenty, thirty. I don't know how many. Oh yeah, you know, already. Yeah. So he, he he showed me the ropes, and I wanted to write the ultimate book on nutrition and training. Yeah, you know how that goes. Oh, so yeah. um, and he kind of explained to me like, look, you know, it's all fine, but you're gonna write a freaking encyclopedia if you do that, and nobody's gonna buy it. No, and it, as good as it may be, nobody will read it. It, right. it won't get read at all. So it don't do that. So uh, and he had to constantly you know hold me back at first you had to push me you know write more write more and then i found my stride and he, he said you know no i have to shut you up because you write too much and i'm trying to find the, the balance here because you know by nature as as you've heard by now is i'm a talker i just keep on going and going, That's, and going. it's okay by me man but I, it doesn't work like that you have to make it you know um, compress it a little bit 
give the important parts first and give it in a way that it builds into a structure that you can give more and more and more. Do you teach the same way? Yes. Um, um, what's it called again? I think I think Mark, who is actually standing here, came up with that one, Lies to Children. Yeah. No, that was Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett, right. That's Li it. Lies to Lies Children. Lies to Children. I think, I think it's, it's so fundamental in teaching and everybody uses it, but not everybody acknowledges it. It's just that when, when you go to school and you learn math as a, as a little kid, first thing they teach you is the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Sure. And then you teach one plus one is two and so on. It goes on. Um, and then you go a little bit higher up in the school system and they teach you, well, actually, that's not wrong, but it's not entirely right also. We lie to you because you've got positive and negative numbers. You've got also plus one and you've got minus one. So instead of saying one plus one equals two, you should say plus one plus plus one equals two, I, the, and it goes yeah, on and on and yeah, on like that. Yeah. And I think with and and then you go to you know university and you say, well, that's right, but it's not the whole story. There's more. So we lie to you so that you can understand the whole thing. Because if we give you you know some, you know a high level math as a child of like eight, it's not going to work. You're not going to get it. And that's the point about, you know, bringing it back to the, the six secret words. It's not that, you know, you, I don't want to share them with people. It's just that it doesn't make sense. It's not that it's so advanced or anything. It's just that you need a certain amount of training and experience before it makes sense. And if you get it before you're at that point, you're going off the wrong direction. And then you end up in a, in a, in a dead end street in your training and, I, and you won't even know it. And, and that's one of the things that I've learned. Uh, my, my teaching changed a lot over the last couple of years. Not as, as much what I'm doing. Obviously, you know, I'm going more into detail and, and, and trying to dig deeper in my art, in the arts that I practice. But it's more, okay, how, how does it all fit together? How, what's the structure? And when I teach, I teach a lot different than I did like only five years ago. I, I, yeah, I would argue this though, Wim, that, that um, and I've said this to other people, is I want, I don't care if I'm looking at a blacksmith or a painter, mm. or a, you know, a rodeo cowboy. I don't care what it is I'm looking at. If I'm seeing craftsmanship, yeah. if I'm seeing an artisan, yeah. I'm hooked. I think that that is really important when teaching the martial arts. You know, a lot of people have passion yeah. about, you can have passion about a lot of stuff but that doesn't necessarily equate into competency exactly. and artistry. Let, let me tell you a story. Um, before I came here to the States, um, I took my girlfriend to, um, to her favorite Japanese restaurant mm -hmm. um, in Brussels. Uh, it's called Kamo, K-A-M-O. Everybody, if you're Brussels, go there for some of the best Japanese food ever. Mm -hmm. He's a young chef, Kamo-san, and, and he's an artist. We were sitting at the counter, and we, he was just right in front of us, and you could watch that man move. And, and I explained to her what, what for me is so fascinating Every single movement that he made was necessary. Nothing else would waste it at all. Every single movement. There yeah. was nothing Isn't that surplus. Isn't that beautiful? Just the way that he grabbed yeah. his knife, that he grabbed the meat, that he one slice. With the next movement, he cleared what he didn't need. With the, when he retracted his knife for, this, for you know, the next, next cut, the left hand was moving in a different direction. And every single movement was so precise. Yeah. But the best part was, and then you saw him um, look at, at everything that was lying there, and in his head he knows what he has to do, all the all the different steps that he has to do before he gets to the final dish. Um, and you saw him thinking, okay, I've cut it up this way. Now it has to look like that, so I have to do it this way and this way and this way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you see him thinking, and he, he holds for like half a second, two seconds max. He, he's just not moving, and he moves again. And it's just every time totally precise. And that's, that's the craftsmanship that I like in, just like you say, in everything, in martial arts. In, uh, I don't like modern art. Why? Because I don't see the craftsmanship. It's you know, in, it conceptual, but I don't, I don't see the, the craftsmanship. You know, I agree with you uh, yeah. in, in many respects on, on, on that. Some modern art, I have to say, you know, it's like, okay, I get that. But just, you know taking a piece of metal and yeah. twisting it 160 degrees and then putting it on a stake out in front of a library and saying, there it is. It's like, I, what, how did I pay for here? Yeah. You know? There are exceptions. I'll give you my, my favorite, um, uh, modern, I don't know if he, I mean, he's a little bit older. Um, his work is older than that. Uh, Gunther Uecker, the German artist. And what he did, and 
is he just grabs um, uh, a plank of, of, of wood, a big square, whatever, mm -hmm. and he hammers nails in there. I have seen his I've, work. I've been to the Antwerp Museum where he has one, where there's one hanging. Sure. And it's just like, I don't know, a couple hundred nails that are, you know, slightly rusting or painted. And yeah. they're all at a specific angle so that it gives a different image uh, depending on how far you stand from it yeah. and at what angle. Very creative. Yeah. So it's not just the concept, but also getting it just right. Because, I mean, you can try that yourself. And try hammering, you know, it's just a hundred nails in a board. Okay, give it a try. And then you look at it and it's crap. It doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, come back and tell me how yeah. that looks. Yeah. So, I mean, craftsmanship and, and, and again, martial arts, there are some people who are here at the barbecue, by the way. Uh, when you see a move, it's like, it's not just poetry in motion, but it's it's just right. There's nothing wrong. It's, it's right. Yes. As it, as it should be. Yes, exactly. And that is the beauty. And when... Um, you know, people say things to like, well, why are you still doing this? You know, you must really love it. The answer is, yeah, you know, I do. But, um, like, I've spent almost a year just trying to get one transition in a stance yeah. to a place where I'm satisfied with it. Yeah. And about the time I think that I've got my feet correct, I realize my hips are not. And yeah. about the time, I, you know, and, and other people would walk in the room and go, ah, it looks fine. And yeah. it does, but it's not where I want it to be. When I, when, and you know what it is when that assembly all links together and you go, ah, yeah, there yeah. it is. And that might be that one of out, out of a thousand punches, that one yeah. of out of a thousand kicks. And you go, that I was agree. it. That was it. Um, I have a friend, a really good friend of mine. He's, a, he's a, an amazing martial artist, by the way, um, Dirk. Um, so if he's listening in, he's no, I'm talking about him now. Um, he, he said it once, uh, said the, the, the correct mindset for um, practicing martial arts is what am I doing wrong now? What am I doing wrong now? So it's hmm. it's all there's always something wrong. The level of detail that you go into is is changes as you get more experience. Yeah, but there's yeah. always something not exactly right. Yeah, I I think of it of, of a little bit differently. My verbiage, my words are a little bit differently. I I think how can I polish this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm putting it in a, in a negative, but yeah. um, I like that because um, the Chinese say uh, uh, eating bitter, you have to eat bitter. Uh, it has to be the bitter taste of defeat. That means that you have to work really, really hard. Well, let me ask you this, and I know what the answer is, and probably most of the listeners, but I'm going to ask you this. Did you learn more when you were in competition? Did you learn more from your victories or your defeats? Oh, no, defeats. defeats. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. No question. I mean, victories are fun and nice, but yeah. And it's also, I mean, so just it's just a snapshot in time because for it might have been that guy's first fight, you know, and my, I don't know, 10th, or it might be that he's, he's you know, he didn't sleep that night and he's having a really bad day and I'm having a good one. Sure. Good day, Whatever. Day. I mean, yeah. it can all happen, so it doesn't mean anything. I mean, competition for me, all, all my trophies are somewhere in a box, and, and I've given a couple to my kids to play with, so yeah, I don't my, care. But <laughs> might are in a box in the garage, too. Yeah, you know? it's, it's just, pff, who cares? But but no, it's true. If it's when you lose. Um, I'll tell you how I got started uh, practicing Tai Chi. Um, I worked in a gym as a personal trainer, trainer with a client, and um, we, did, we did kickboxing in the back uh, in one of the rooms there. And the owner said, you know, you, you do this martial arts thing, and we've got a, a really good Tai Chi teacher here. Now, I'd been, you know, I just finished competing in internationally, so I was just, just hot stud, you know, thinking I was all that. And I said, yeah, but Tai Chi is for old people. And he says, no, 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 these guys fight. And I'm like, okay. So uh, I went to a class, and I'm a, big, I'm a little small guy. I'm a heavyweight. And there was this guy, he missed maybe, he was a lightweight. It was really small, very light. What, did, like 76 kilograms? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah. like that. I mean, not a big guy at all. I mean, if we, if we would arm wrestle, I, I'd just smash him into the floor every single time. So. Yeah. But we did push hands, and sure, for, the, for the people yeah, who don't know that, it's just uh, you stand, you stand in front of each other, you fell tried the ground, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, <laughs> he put me on my butt every single time, and the yeah. harder I tried, the more muscle I put in there, the more I fell over. Sure, the worse it got for you. Yeah, so I was like, I gotta learn this stuff because sure. if this little guy can do that to me, somebody my size, sure. that'll be fun. Yeah, and I never stopped training. I, I just kept coming back for more, and I'm still with my teacher. So, and, and, and that's exactly what, I mean, what you said, it's, it's the defeats, it's when you lose, when you mess up, when you do something wrong, that's when you have a, a shot at learning. 
and it potentially learning. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Because just because you're defeated, uh, I mean, you, you're in such a situation doesn't mean that you actually do learn something. It's up to you. If you were going to, like, in one short sentence, describe how you used to train and how you train today, what's the differences? I mean, you know, and, and like to, to get it down into maybe just one or two words for each description. That's how would hard. you do that? That, that? That's pretty difficult. How, let, let me think about that one. Um, probably the best, the best way, you know, I'd say more focused, more concentrated. And that makes it seem like I wasn't focused before, but that's not what I mean. What I mean is that I didn't understand what focus was when I was younger. Yeah. Well, I, I would say that I trained like a young man. Yeah. You know, and now I don't train like a young yeah. man. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, um, I turned 39 this year and I kicked my own ass for my birthday. Yeah. Oh, I, I, 39. I what a wonderful, I remember 39. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, my arthritis started when I was like 32. So oh, okay. you know, my body feels like it's, it's 75. But yeah. uh, I said, you know, there's a heavy bag when you're 39. Let's see if you still got it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and I did um, Tabata interval training. Do you know that? No, what is that? Uh, professor Tabata was a professor at the university, I think in Tokyo, and he did a, a training uh, protocol where he um, trained the Olympic ice skating team. And, and he kicked their ass. I mean, they would literally be puking because of the intensity of the training. And it's, it's very simple. It's 20 seconds of full bore exercise and i don't mean lifting dumbbells and you know not not lift not doing uh, uh i don't know um bicep curls no sure full body your whole body is working you're sprinting you're oh, like burpees whatever. or something yeah but you know. non-stop going yeah, full yeah. bore 20 seconds 10 seconds rest and so and that's one set you do eight you do it eight times in a row so you're about four minutes and you're done but you it's the kind of training that you do in like when you're halfway through you know when, when you do two then, you, then you're thinking, okay, two more and I'm halfway through. When you're halfway through, you're, you're like, oh, crap, oh, man, I can't make it. I mean, that's the type of intensity that you're, that you're working at. And it's excellent for, for, uh, for everything. I mean, it builds, builds uh, ex explosive movement, endurance. Uh, so it's, it's got a plyometric aspect to yeah, it. Everything, yeah. because you're, 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 I mean, you're exp you know the, the Muay Thai guys, how they do this machine gun kicking against the back. Yeah. As you just bam, 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 it doesn't stop. Well, like that. Imagine 20 seconds, then rest 20 seconds, and just giving it your all. Everything as hard as you can. Um, that's what I did for my birthday. <laughs> you kicked your own ass. Yeah, and I plan on doing that every year as long as I can. Just every year, I'll kick my own ass on my birthday. Just Very that, good. you know, um, I won't be a young man anymore, but I don't really like the guys who. Who, who say that, you know, well, you're a little bit older, so you don't have to do the physical training anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I still lift weights. I still, uh, you know, do, do a lot of special conditioning training so that physically speaking, you know, I'll, I'll try to stay on, uh, in the best shape as possible. That's the whole thing. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you what, I remembered when I realized that I didn't heal the way I used yeah, to. Yeah, no, no, I, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I know that part. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I, and back in the day, I would go to a judo tournament I'd have five matches. Yeah. I'd come home. Yeah. It would still yeah. be daylight because yeah. it was summer. And I'd mow the lawn. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I know that part. Yeah. No, th those days are gone. Yeah. Those days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do a lot more stretching nowadays and, 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 and just uh, working on smaller, smaller muscles to stabilize the body and so on. What are you finding with uh, the people that you're uh, training uh, you're doing uh, the physical training with. Uh, are you finding a commonality, like you know that their their uh, psoas or their hip flexors are tight because they sit all day, or you know, are you finding a a common thread that's running through that? Uh, most mostly um, no flexibility, uh, just just generally speaking. Yeah. And, and for most people, that translates in in uh, lower back and hamstrings. It's just it's creeping rigor mortis. Yeah. You know? they, they just don't, I mean, they don't use um, high amplitude movements anymore. And then they don't understand when they get back problems or, you know, sure. as soon as they have to slide a little bit or they make a bigger step than usual, I mean, something something tears because they, they can't do it. Yeah. Or they yeah. lift something heavy and their back goes out. And I'm not talking, you know, like 50-year-olds. I'm talking young people as well. I, I, I've seen a really a, a big transition in people's physicality yeah. from when I first started training to today. Um, 
you know, I, I just, I, I'm, it's that profound that I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, you're right. It is about flexibility. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got teenagers that can't touch their toes. Yeah, that is. Unless you've got, you know, some sort of genetic predisposition to back problems or you've got, yeah. I mean, uh, something, uh, a medical problem, yeah, it should be possible to do that at that age. I've sent my kids to gymnastics, as, you know, as soon as I could. And my, my boy, he stopped, but he's playing soccer now. But my How girl, old is he now? Uh, he's going to turn nine, actually yeah. on Monday. <laughs> so I uh, got him the laser gun from Star Wars and everything. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, he uh, he plays soccer now, and uh, my uh, daughter, she um, she uh, plays um, well. You know, she she does gymnastics, but she also. Um, uh, how old is she? Uh, she's gonna turn uh, 11 in November. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look out. Yeah. So uh, she, I mean, they're they're all very active. She she they wanted her for the swimming team as well. So she swims like two times a week. But I want them to exercise. You have to exercise. Yeah. It doesn't matter what, but they have to. Yeah. They can pick, but there's there's no sitting at home playing Nintendo all day long. None of that. No. It's uh that 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 I well, we can get off on an entire, you know, story about what that has wrought on uh on the children of the world. I mean, good grief. Let me ask you this. If you were going to make a recommendation to somebody who's just starting the martial arts, yeah, regardless of age, what would your one piece of advice to them be? Ha, huh. the one, the one, the one uh, that I learned pretty early on: do something every day. Do it every day, because I can't tell you how many times that I see new students who are talented, who are actually that you see that they can go really far, but they don't practice. I, um, it's no discipline. Yeah. No, I, I don't, you know, I understand now. I mean, when I was younger, I, I couldn't, I was very upset about it, but as a teacher, but nowadays I understand that nobody has the same passion as I do. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, you sure. train for your own reasons, that's fine, but don't expect to make progress by going to class twice a week and that's it. I mean, I came over after class and our class uh, lasted for, for, uh, for two hours straight and for one hour of conditioning as running and push-ups and jumping jacks for an hour straight. And then we had, a, we had an hour of class with everything in it. And then I came home and, and, and I trained some more. Yeah. And I got up the next day and I repeated the movements. Not, you know, because I was so disciplined, because, just because I was afraid to forget them. Because I'm not a quick learner. I take a lot, a lot of repetitions before I get something. And so I just did them every day, a little bit. Just so a, a little. So you're saying, regardless of age, style, do, whatever it is, yeah. put one foot in front of the other every day. But, you know, the thing is, if if you if you can, okay, train an hour each day, if you can. But who can? Who, who is in that that situation that they you know they you know systematically do it? Very few people. Sure. So that I don't even say that anymore. I tell my students, look, two minutes, five minutes, maybe ten minutes. Just do do, do a couple minutes a day. I say the same do thing. It. I, I tell my students, I say, uh, do some karate every day. Yeah. I didn't say how much. Yeah, or I how said, intense. Yeah, but I said do some. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, uh, gosh, it's a, that's a great piece of advice. We're going to close on that great piece of advice, Well, Awesome. Hey, listen, this is fantastic. We have, uh, we've talked via email and across our podcasts and, you know, and, and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, to finally get a chance to meet you, I've decided that if, uh, if we ever, uh, should have to go to blows, I am bringing a, I am, I'm bringing a knife. <laughs> I'm running. I uh, run really fast. I'm going I'm to cut your hamstring so you can't go back on your weight. It's <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> all right, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you very I really much, really appreciate you being here. And to the listeners out there of Marshall Secrets, thanks so much for listening. Really appreciate you sticking with the show. Glad you find some value in it. Thanks so much. Uh, it wouldn't be anything if, if you weren't listening. That's why we do the show. And, uh, and thanks so much. And as always, be well. Nice work. Hi, this is Chris Wilder from Marshall Secrets. Marshall Secrets is free, but it's not costless. So tell your friends about Marshall Secrets. Your good words are the best endorsement we can have. Also, if you like what you hear, buy one of our books. Buy one of our DVDs. We think they're pretty good, and we think you'll find value in them, too. 
As always, we appreciate you listening and your support. You can find us pretty quickly by just going to Amazon.com, typing in Lawrence Kane or Chris Wilder, and you can find all of our books and DVDs there. Thanks for listening, and be well.